Hey Math One, welcome to another day of quarantine math as we continue chapter six. Uh, we're going to do section six four. I don't think this will take very long. So let's get started. All right. Hopefully you've printed out these notes or gotten them. And let's do it. Let me fix this a little better. Okay. So our objective today is to learn to write. Let's see that is. Oh well. Learn to write, and that's mostly what we're going to do, and continue solving systems of equations. All right? So here's the deal. When translating word problems into algebraic equations, you're going to want to use variables to represent unknown amounts. And I have this thing I call the 98% rule, which is usually 98% of the time, the variables will represent the amounts that we are trying to solve for. When using variables to represent amounts in a real-world problem, you always want to tell what the variable stands for or represents. Hence, we have this thing called the let statement. Now look, when you go to solve a real-world problem, there are three parts to solving it. First, you have to write a let statement to tell what your variables represent. Part B is use information from the problem to write a system of equations using your variables. And then part C is to solve the system that you wrote. Now, we've already done this part the last several days, so today we're going to concentrate on these parts. We will concentrate on parts A and B, because you already know how to do part C. All right, so first we're going to look at the let statement. <clears throat> Algebraic equations, that just means equations with variables, are easier to understand when everyone knows what the variables represent. A statement that describes what the variable represents is called a let statement. And I have an example here for you. A new exhibit at the Columbus Zoo is elephants and ostriches on display. Determine how many elephants and how many ostriches are in the exhibit. Now, this is not a complete example because you could not actually solve this. But all I really want to point out in this example is how to write the let statements. So we're going to use what I call the 98% rule, which is have your variables represent the answer to the question. Right here is what they want you to solve for. How many elephants and ostriches are in the exhibit? So if that's what they want me to figure out, that's what I make my variables represent. That's the 98% rule. Have my variables represent the answer to what they want me to figure out. So I like to use X and Y, but you could use any variables you want. <clears throat> A lot of people would use like E for elephants, but I certainly don't like using O for ostriches because a O looks like a zero. I'm going to go ahead and use X and Y. You can use whatever variables you want. I'm going to let X equal the number of elephants on display. I like being descriptive. And I'm going to let Y equal the number of ostriches on display. Okay, that's all a let statement is, is when you let people know what your variables represent. That is the first new thing you'll be doing on your homework. Right, you'll also have to write a system. So I've continued this example, same example, and I've given you more information so you could actually write some algebraic equations. So let's read it. A new exhibit at the Columbus Zoo is elephants and ostriches on display. There were a total of 48 animals in the display. 
there were eight more elephants than ostriches. And each elephant had four legs, each ostrich has two legs, and there were a total of 152 legs in all. Determine how many elephants and ostriches are in the exhibit. All right, so what I claim is, is that each sentence in the problem gives you information about the number of elephants and the number of ostriches. For instance, there were a total of 48 animals in display. That tells me something about my variables. There were eight more elephants than ostriches. That tells me something about my variables. And finally, each elephant has four legs, each ostrich has two legs, and there were a total of 152 legs in all. So I've actually given you three pieces of information. Now I note down here that usually there's only two pieces of information. I gave three just because I wanted to practice this. Each piece of information allows you to write a sentence. Let's look at how. So the first one was a total of 48 animals. So a total of 48 animals means the number of elephants plus the number of ostriches equals 48. Or I can write that using my variables. X is the number of elephants, so this would be X. And Y is the number of ostriches, so this would be Y, and that equals 48. I now have an equation, X plus Y equals 48. Next up, there are eight more elephants than ostriches, it told me. That means that the number of ostriches plus eight equals the number of elephants. Let's do this. All right, <clears throat> so let me write an algebraic equation. The number of ostriches, that would be y, plus 8 equals the number of elephants, that would be x. y plus 8 equals x. I now have two equations with two variables, and I could use the substitution method to solve that system. Here is a, another typical thing they say, though. So it told you that the elephants have four legs, the ostriches have two legs, and there's 152 legs in all. So that means the number of elephant legs plus the number of ostrich legs equals total legs. Well, how can I represent the number of elephant legs? Each elephant has four legs, and there are x elephants. So if each elephant has four legs and there's x elephants, then four times x would be the number of elephant legs. And that same thing works for ostriches. There are y ostriches, and each one has two legs, so 2 times y would be the total number of ostrich legs. And apparently that equals the total number of legs, 152. And I now have three equations. All right, so I hope you get the idea. We're going to do one example straight off of delta math and see if we can do this. Now, you don't have to solve these today. All you have to do is write the let statements and set up your equations. All right, we got Thomas. Now, I may have changed the name from Delta Math. Thomas has set up a lemonade stand outside his house and sells small cups and large cups of lemonade. Each small cup holds 6 ounces, and each large cup holds 18 ounces. Thomas used 780 ounces, Ooh, that's going to be important, and sold four times as many large cups as small cups. Write a system of equations that could be used to determine the number of small cups 
and the number of large cups sold. All right. So first, I have to do my let statement. Now, at the end of the problem, typically, they tell me what they want me to figure out. It says, determine the number of small cups and large cups sold. All right, so that's going to be my let statement, right? My let statement, my variables, typically, 98% of the time, they want to be the answer to my question. So I'm going to use x for the number of small cups sold, and I'm going to use y for the number of large cups sold. All right, <clears throat> so again, my variables represent the answer to what they want me to figure out. That's a great way to do it if you're having trouble deciding what to have your variables represent. Have them represent the answer to what you're trying to figure out. All right, now they've given me two pieces of information. Here's one of them. They sold four times as many large cups as small cups. So they sold more larges. It sounds like four times the number of small equals the number of large. Four times the number, yeah, because they sold four times as many large as small. So in words, it would look like that. I can go ahead and put my variables in and say 4x, because x is the number of small, equals y. And I have one of my equations. My other equation says that Thomas used 780 ounces of lemonade. All right, so let's see. Number ounces in large cups. I guess that'd be the total number of ounces in the large cups plus the total number of ounces in small would equal total ounces. Well, the total ounces, I know it's 780. What is the total number of ounces used in the large cups? Let's see, there were, there were 18 ounces of lemonade in each large cup. 18 ounces in each large cup, and I used Y of them. So 18 times y would give me the total number of ounces. 18 ounces in each cup times the number of cups I used. And that same logic would work for the small. 6 ounces in each cup times the number of cups I used. 18y plus 6x equals 780. And I'm done. I've done the two things I'm supposed to do. I have written my let statements and I have set up my system of equations. Now, I'm not going to solve this, but if I was doing this one, I'd use substitution. I would take what y equals, and I would substitute over here in for y. So 18 times 4x plus 6x equals 780, and I'm on my way to solve it. But on tonight's homework, you don't have to do that. You just have to know how to set up the let statements and write the two equations. All right. Good luck. I'll see you guys on Friday.